I just came in as the uh, town meeting account just so I can record this because uh, we don't have it 100% finished yet, but we will by next week. Okay. So we need a second on that. Uh, second, sorry. I was um, out. That's right. Second. Perfect timing. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Real eye. <clears throat> We have discussed Northbridge Road tonnage limit. I believe Alana is on the call to discuss that. I was on for the baseball thing. Okay. Oh, you're right. Okay. I'm looking Sorry. at the wrong. But thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is there anyone on the call to discuss the Northbridge Road ton limit? Yes, I am. Okay, what's your name? Hi, Cindy Trapani. Okay, Cindy, go right ahead. Oh, I wasn't expecting to really speak. I thought that um, Kim would take on this one. Okay. <laughs> um, um, just, just well, I just wanted to say that um, I just know that there are multitude of tractor trailers, eighteen wheelers going up Northbridge Road, up and down Northbridge Road shaking the, the foundations of the properties my steps are crumbling uh just flying up that road and they're 18 wheelers and they're just doing the shortcut to get through they don't you know, I mean, whether they belong on there or not it, it is a res residential road and i just feel that um i just want to give you a little history when i when i was i lived did live in worcester mass we i lived on massasoit road and uh, we had all the trucks coming from the big d to get onto route 20. and uh, i had my uh, state rep um, do a petition to to pretty much um stop that because the rumbling it was just it was horrific so that's what i'm asking for northbridge road in menden okay um you know, I, I actually live right off of Northbridge Road, and I've lived there my whole life. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so I know that in the past it was actually much worse because there was Misco Springs Bottling Company, and mm -hmm. yeah. there were an exponential in a, amount of tractor trailer trucks going back and forth. And so, right. um, yeah, you know, I, I think that it's it's really not even a cut through in my mind because it's an easy way it's kind of our main access to northbridge in some ways so i don't personally see how we can restrict those types of trucks from accessing that road well the suggestion would be to put a tonnage a weight so that those trucks would go on Route 16 to get to where they need to go, or down North Street, Menden Street, to get to where they need to go, and not a residential road that doesn't even have a sidewalk. You can't even walk on that road without uh, pretty much thinking you're going to uh, get walking on uh, 290. It's it's really bad. I I mean I live right on that road, and and you you it's just you can't even like my husband's working from home and. The noise and and uh, just when those trucks going by, the pollution, the it's like being on on the on, on the Mass Pike. It's, it's so I don't I understand that waters used to be down there, but we're talking like um, pen coming up the road, um, shaws coming up the road. Um, what do I got here? I did get right Walmart coming up the road. Um, the UPS tractor trailers are coming up the road, not just to deliver packages. Um, like I said, shaws. Uh, um, SC tra S S S tractor, I saw Western Express. Um, you, you're talking like I don't know how you can say that uh, that it's 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 okay for them to go down a residential road. Well, I, I don't think that. I mean, almost all of the streets of Menden are residential roads, so they've got to be. I understand what you what you're saying. Like I said, I live there and I can hear the trucks. But to restrict to to restrict traffic like that, I think is is just I don't know. They're they're going to go go through the town in one way or another, and it's going to be a residential road. And that access road, Northridge Road, is the 
easiest access to Northbridge. If you're going Route 16, you got to go yeah. all the way to Northbridge. And then, I'm sorry to yeah, I'm sorry to inconvenience everybody in these trials. No, you're not. I, I'm sorry to, to interrupt Happy to hear your concerns. Yeah. Um, Chief you Kersey know, you has... You don't know what it's like to live there. You don't know. It's been a while. And and let me tell you, it, it, it's horrific. It is. And I don't understand why they can't go on. I thought that by law, they're, they're supposed to be going, go on main roads, routes, not on a, 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 a cut route. It's, it's, it's become hazardous to anyone who wants to walk it. Correct. And I didn't realize that you, you that tra tractor trailers can go on residential roads, and there are not all just residential roads, roads in Menden. We have Route 16. You have Menden Street. North Street. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's oh, somewhere yeah. in town hall. Oh, hmm. there we go. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> Chief Fersey has season. his hand raised. Chief, do you have something to, to add to this conversation? Excuse me, I just came into, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Chief Kersey? No, I have nothing. No, I'm, I'm talking to Chief Kersey. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. got to mute this somehow. <clears throat> No, Dave. Okay. Uh, um, I just want to say, uh, if if Kim could put the, Kim, I know that I talked to Brian um, Murray about this, and uh, I think he's giving you some input as well. Hold on, I'm getting Chief Kersey for you. Okay. Volume on my computer is not working. Sorry about that. Okay. Um. So I, I have a couple things that I wanted to bring up. Representative Murray did call call me and contact me. Um, yes. I guess I have two things. One is chief and one is a resident. The first would be as chief. Um, okay. I don't know how we would restrict a public way in the town of Menden that is a main route to Northbridge. Um, part, part of that would be um, these are taxpayers, whether they're businesses or some are, you know, these big trucks are individual agencies that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo that one down. Um, so some of these some of these trucks going through, if you set a ton limit, you have residents actually who live in town, who work in town, who go through that road, who use that road and pay taxes in this town. So now you'd be limiting their access to a public way. I think personally, I think there'd be an issue there. And as a police chief, I think there'd be an issue there. Um, as a resident, we have um, I I would have an issue with it just because we approved a 90. Um, plus house development right down the street from there. Um, I don't know how you could set any tonnage that would um, prohibit those vehicles from going in. The town already approved that development, and now you'd constrict their con restrict their construction there. Um, you know, so I have a concern there also, which I talked to Representative Murray about. Because once I hung up with him, I told him I just, as a chief and a resident, I wouldn't be in favor of any type of ton limit on that street. So. Right. Well, Chief, as, as you know, as it, I know they're working on the road, and that's all well and good. You know, you see the trucks going back and forth. That, that you know, is acceptable. But when it becomes a cut road, that's what I think I'm basically trying to say. And yeah, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know how you differentiate it. So you have machines going down there to build that 90 house development that was approved through the town amendment. Those those are the heaviest machines going down there. So any, any limit you put to... Act, restrict those other trucks. Now you're not going to be able to get the machines down there that are building building that 90 plus um, development that was approved by you know the building department and through the town and zoning. So I think there'd be an issue there. It's Lonnie, can, you, can I? I'm oh, sorry. I, I just wanted to say I don't believe tonnage limits are to reduce traffic for a road. Tonnage limits are generally set when the roadway can't support the weight of the road, such as you have to cross a bridge. That's like, if you look at Bellingham Street, we have tonnage limits on Bellingham Street it's because those three bridges that are on Bellingham Street cannot support over a certain weight. Weight. So it's not just to reduce traffic. It's, it's for a specific reason of weight. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think that's the only reason you should use tonnage, but there is, um, when I talked to Representative Murray, that's kind of a back door to stop traffic. He, He's recommended in the past tonnage limits, and that reduces the traffic, which I think is a backdoor way of, of uh, abusing kind of the tonnage limit. 
Right, right. Um, he, he had a bunch of suggestions, actually. So, we talked, we talked, so, so we part of the issue limits. here, Cindy, is that, yeah. you know, if we put at the town line some sort of limit, then you're going to have tractor trailer trucks coming all the way through Northbridge and getting to Menden. And then what, you know, it would have to be with with Northbridge. And I just really don't see Northbridge Road as a cut through road. I see it as a connecting road between Menden and Northbridge. So. I personally, as a board member, I'm not in favor of of taking action on on this because I just don't feel <clears throat> that the road is a quiet residential street. It's always been high traffic and has always had tractor trailer trucks going between North. Yeah. Hmm. OK. Do you see any uh, any other way to to, to go? What's I mean, maybe in terms of enforcement, in terms of enforcement, uh, you know, maybe the speed issue could be addressed with mm -hmm. the police department. I'm sure Dave can talk to that, but um, I think that's probably the main avenue here. Well, I, I was told that, you know, the, the police have, have a lot of, you know, issues going on with Route 16, let alone to be monitoring um, Northbridge Road. Which I, we I have a, um, we have a monthly radar post that we, that we post. It's a calendar that all the officers go and do radar assignments on, and it rotates every few days on different streets. Northbridge Road has definitely been hit um, over the past six months a few times, so we rotate every street in town. On a monthly calendar, and the uh, all the officers go out and do active radar and patrol on the streets. Um, obviously, we can't be there 24/7. You know, you get a window of us there, you know, for three or four days, you know, a couple hours each day. Um, but that generally slows them down for a little while because then they're looking for us and thinking we're there. And by the time we come back, hopefully that that um, starts up again. Um, but I mean, speeding with this town and any town in general these days is, is just a huge issue. You, what you know, you're more than welcome to go into my driveway. Um, yep. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to ask you about the, the curb. I mean, just the people that are walking with their dogs or with their grandchildren or, you know, walking, just getting exercise out there. Um, there's no curb on that, on that, on the road. After you pass, uh, what do you call it? Oh, I can't think of the name of the street. Um, we'll connect to Northbridge. It, oh my God. Washington. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah after you pass that, there's no, there's no curb. Like there's cars, you know, someone caught the big, you know, looks down at their phone or anything, and someone's walking, you, you wiped out, you're gone. Yeah, I, I unfortunately, unfortunately, that's about eighty percent of Menden. Um, you know, that's really something that Alan, the Highway Department, has tried to do a good job on, is creating more sidewalks and curbs. And he had a grant for Main Street here because it was so dangerous that we redid all the sidewalks and curbing over here. Um, there are, unfortunately, Menden's an old. Yankee town and there were no curbs and sidewalks and you know the highway department each year tries to do the best they can to to add to it um you know i'm not part of that that process but i, I know he takes input and we tell him you know the streets that we think are the worst and you know he takes the money he has and tries to expand on it every year you think that we could work on perhaps the speed limit uh, speed limit is pretty much set by law so it goes by the distance between houses and the um, distance a residential area, so the speed limits are pretty much set that way. Um, Northbridge has a few speed limits. It, there's one part where it's 30, there's one part where it's 35, so the speed limits are regulated. Um, I don't think you can go much below 30 on that street, um, but a lot of the, a lot of this, I'm trying to think, there's, there's three different jumps there, but um, we do patrol them and we do enforce, enforce the speeds. All right, so if um, does Selectman Burke or Selectman Tinio have anything to add here? I have nothing to add, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I do not. All right, well, Cindy, I, you know, I appreciate yeah. you reaching out on this issue. I know it's frustrating and I wish there was something more we could do to, to help there, but um, we okay. do have to move okay. on from this issue. So thank you for, okay. for coming in.
And thank you for your, all your response. Thank you. Thank you. OK, consider meeting minutes for 9-1. I move to approve the meeting minutes from 9-1-2020. Second. All in favor? Mark, aye. Simeo, aye. Real aye. Uh, consider contract for interim treasure collector. Kim? Hi. So as you know, we have a vacancy in the treasurer collector's office. Um, we need some time in order to be able to effectively recruit for the right candidate for the position. So we have um, used our other consultant to make a recommendation um, for a firm that we can use to bridge this gap. Um, Strategic Municipal Solutions is that firm. Um, the motion I'm suggesting is um, up to 15 hours per week. Right now, um, just as a comparison, so you know, last time when we did this, it was 10 hours a week. And my expectation is that we are going to be closer to 10, but I want to have the 15 just in case there's some additional work that they um, need to do during this time. My estimated time frame is about eight weeks. Okay. Um. I move to authorize the town administrator to sign a contract for an interim treasurer collector with strategic municipal solutions for up to 15 hours a week. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Brock, aye. Tineo, aye. Real aye. <clears throat> Consider staffing positions. Okay, that's okay, so I'm not quite savvy enough to share my screen just yet. I could try, but let me just start by talking first. I'm getting a lot of feedback though from some one, but so um, as you know, we um, we worked and uh, with our, our neighbors and we were able to regionalize dispatch and that agreement is coming into place for January 1st. That regionalization has freed up, um, in addition to a, uh, a lot of expenditure cash for full-time FTEs in the budget and their benefits. So we wanna use those savings in order to prioritize other needs within the community. And I can get into a little bit why these priorities um, after I just go through the positions. Let me see if I can share my screen. Hold on, people. Hopefully this is the right one. Can you see it? Can you see it? Mm, yes. It's, it's yep, it's there. It's there. Okay, so I'll just keep moving quickly. Um, I know the board is familiar with all of this material, so I'm just sharing it for public consumption. Um, so we actually have four positions that we're um, considering right now. I'll talk. I'll talk about the one that's not listed here first. We have a position that's the admin assistant at the um, senior center, and I just wanted to give an update on that position that we are going to be advertising for it and filling it. Um, we had put that on pause, um, waiting to see the outcome of what was happening with the pandemic, and so we're prepared at this point to move forward based upon the needs that were presented by the director. So the first position um, to talk about here that is a bit of a change is the finance director, treasurer, collector position. I envision this position to be an up to 30 hour a week position. It was previously 35 as the treasurer collector. The salary range for this is 62,000 to 80,000. Um, what this position does is it will coordinate all the financial functions under one professional with has expertise in municipal finance. Um, it will work with myself and the board to help us achieve and set financial goals. It's going to provide expertise in forecasting, capital planning, investing, all areas that we have been trying to put more effort into over the past couple of years. 
it's going to help us um, get through this crisis and planning for future overrides, which we know will be right down the road. And, you know, it will, it, it matches the state's current recommendation that towns start to consolidate financial positions under one main director. The next position that we are talking about is an executive assistant to fire police. This is a 40 hour a week position. The salary range is 46,000 to 60,000. Um, you can see on the bullets here, it's going to provide um, greater customer service. The number one feedback that we got for the regionalization of dispatch was the concern that we wouldn't have somebody actually at the station during the day in order to greet residents who had concerns. This position would be seated at the, the new station. However, it would the position will report to the fire chief and provide administrative and clerical support to that department. Um, it will help free him up from some of the administrative functions that he has to do now so he can focus more on being the chief that we need him to be. Um, it also will provide coverage for any of the leftover clerical or um, administrative work that you know still exists for providing a dispatch service. Even though we are regionalized, there are still documents that need to be processed and organized, and they are of a highly confidential nature, um, like this confidential. Um, and it would also help us with grant procurement and administration. The third position is a shared planner. This is envisioned as 13 hours a week dedicated to Menden. It's a shared position with Uxbridge and Millville. Our share with benefits would be about 35 to 45,000. This position has actually been budgeted the last three years. Um, we were, have been waiting to work with CMRPC, which we, which we have been doing in order to find partner communities that have the same technical needs and staffing needs so that we are basically aligned in what our goals are in these communities. And so um, right now, CMRPC is uh, finalizing a job description. They would handle the recruitment and we would obviously have a say in um, who was hired and what, where they work and how they work. Um, the idea for this position is that it will provide that technical support that we have been wanting for the planning board. It would certainly be the expert that we need to help guide us through some tricky situations. Um, and it would attend planning meetings, but you know, equally as important is that it will serve as a liaison between the board of selectmen and the planning board so that we can really work on those communication issues that we keep getting so much feedback about. So I, financially, I'll just talk you through this very quickly. Um, you can see I have the three possessions, the possessions here, benefits, and then I'll go down a little. Um, on average for this fiscal year, if it was a whole calendar year, the cost for these positions, and I just wanna add this caveat, I budget at the middle of the range for each of these positions, not knowing what they would be hired at, what experience they would have. So one year would be, 67,000 in the middle, 20,000 for benefits. This 5850 is an additional five hours that the um, assistant treasurer collector would be performing. The executive assistant to fire is 52,5, benefits are 20, and then the shared planner is 37. So the cost for this fiscal year, um, this is based upon the number of months that we think that the person would actually be in the position. You can see it's about 39 for the finance director. Benefits would be all at 11. The, this would be about 4,800, fire police 30, benefits 11, and then the shared planner, it would be about 18,000. So the cost for this fiscal year starting now um, would be 117,000. And funding for that comes from these places. Um, the board will recall that um, we had previously uh, considered it as high as $68,000 in the treasurer collector's office for a salary. We had budgeted the line flat for this fiscal year and put the remainder in reserve for negotiations. So we have some of that funding from that 68 is in reserve for negotiations. Dispatch will have about six months worth of saving in salaries, about 34 in benefits. Um, there's a, there will be after the, after the payout for the previous treasurer collector and the uh, cost for the interim treasurer, there'll be about 16,000 left in the salary line. And then there's the 20,000, like I said, that we had been budgeting the last couple of years for planning. So the funding available is 212. So we will still, we'll have a net surplus of $95,000 this fiscal year, even making these adjustments. For the next fiscal year, the savings are higher. Obviously, so this is a whole year projected salary. 
68,000 benefits, 5,900. The reason that this is um, the jump is not as great here is because the the person in this position is already working the hours, so it's not as great of an increase. The um, full time for the executive benefits; these are all assumed at two percent. Um, shared benefits, same thing. So the cost for one whole fiscal year starting FY twenty two is about two oh seven, and then you can see here we'll have about two hundred sixty three thousand dollars of savings from dispatch salaries. That includes overtime. We'll have seventy thousand dollars in savings and benefits. 12,000 from expenses from dispatch, 60, oops, sorry, 60,000 from the salary line and 20,000 from planning. So the total funding available to us 426, leaving us with about 220 still unallocated from the savings from dispatch. And finally, um, to just to answer, this is kind of a general catch question. Why now, instead of waiting until um, July 1 next fiscal year? So the savings for dispatch is going to start in January, 2021. The assistant to fire and police, the sooner we can get them on board, and I'm envisioning December 1, is gonna help um, do some of the transition from the old station to the new station. And it's gonna make sure that the paperwork and all of the details that we need in order to go to Metacomet are done smoothly. The treasurer collected position is vacant right now. And the board has been planning to move forward uh, with, to reorganize the department for about a year. And so we would continue down that path and hope that we can find a candidate that can actually meet the goals that the board has been intending. And then for planning, like I said, CMRPC has been working with the town for about three years. Um, and we previously were going to be paired up with Upton and Hopedale, but their needs for their position were slightly different than ours. So they ended up regionalizing while sharing a position in a different way. This, um, the compatibility between Millville, Uxbridge and Menden was more similar. And so they have just proposed this um, combination to us within the last month. And so that is that of talking. Okay, any questions? Mr. Jammin, uh, right. I worked with um, I worked with uh, Kim on this a little bit, and um, I don't have any questions. I think she did a great job uh, preparing this for this evening. Yeah, I would agree. I I was able to review this material ahead of time, and I think it's important for the community and. It's the direction that we want to go. So I'm all set here. Selectman Tinio, any questions? I don't have any questions. Uh, I was able to review everything uh, as well. Um, excellent presentation and uh, good job getting it all together. And I agree that uh, this will be all good stuff for, for the town uh, with the direction that we're heading. Okay. So we have a few motions. Chris, do you want to begin? Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll move to approve the executive assistance fire police department position for 40 hours per week at a salary range of 46000 to 60000 Second. Second. All in favor? Burke, aye. Tineo, aye. Real aye. Okay. And I'll move to approve the finance director, treasurer collector position for up to 30 hours per week with a projected salary range of 62,000, 80,000. Second. All in favor? Burke, aye. Tineo, aye. Real aye. All right. And uh, is there a planner motion, Kim, or not yet? Nope, there's no, there's no, um, motion for the planner or for the administrative assistant. Those are mostly just updates to let you know, since the position is already budgeted, this is more gonna be about the board considering the you know agreement between the couple of towns. And so I'll be bringing that to the board at a future meeting. Okay. Um, just because there's limited time, we're gonna jump to the new fire engine lease because that will require a vote just in case Chris has to leave, so. I will accept a motion on that. Move to approve the new fire engine lease for a total amount of 501,478 for a term of eight years. Second. Okay, Chief Kessler, you wanna speak to that? 
Sure. Uh, as you know, we discussed at the town meeting, uh, town meeting approved the purchase of a fire engine. Uh, we were hoping for a federal grant. Uh, unfortunately, even though the truck is 27 years old, it's still outside the uh, parameters for what the uh, that grant program is looking for. Um, so we were we didn't even get by the electronic scoring because it, that's not quite old enough. Um, we did reach out. I reached out to a few leasing companies. We got a uh, lease rate for the eight year uh, lease at 1.94% um, with a uh, payment right around uh, 67, $68,000 a year. Um, that truck is a program truck, which means it was already in production when uh, we realized we needed to get a truck sooner than specking the truck. And uh, it, they should be getting it, should be to the local dealer um, within a couple of weeks and hopefully to us by the end of October. Okay. Any questions from the board? Uh, just assuming that that matches what we we budgeted in the uh, in the budget. Yes, the uh, town meeting approved uh, seventy five thousand dollars for the first year lease, um, so we are underneath that approval amount. Thanks, Chief. Going to remember. Excellent. Okay. All in favor? Or God. Video aye. Real eye. Thank you, Chief. Look forward to taking a ride, it, Chief. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Excellent. Discuss TAF Library Feasibility Study. Is Amy going to do this presentation? Yeah. Hi, I'm here. How are you? Great, how are you? Doing well. We also have Andrew and Tara on the call in case there are questions specific to, you know, the design, the programming of space and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to go over the results that we got from the architect. Um, do you want me to share my screen? Would that be helpful or? Sure. Okay. Uh, do you need to give me permission? Mm. I may, one sec. Have IT company will travel. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Amy, I might have uh, muted you at first by accident. Go ahead and just unmute. <laughs> oh, did you guys get a chance to look at the study? I did not. I did uh, browse through the options, yes. Can you present right. now? So I should be able to share? Yes, I believe so. The the share button is grayed out now. Oh, got it. OK, here it comes. Try now. Oh, you know what? It has to do with my computer. I'm sorry. No problem. This is, this is a new computer. And I haven't updated all my settings. Rats. Do you want to email it to me? I can pop it up. Sure. Um, uh, send it to oh, wait. You know what? Sorry. Send it to Kim. K. Newman at mendenma.gov. I'm on my phone. I've never tried to share from my phone. I actually have it. I can just pull it up. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I'm done. 
Hold on, guys. I have it. I'm just going to share now. Desktop window. I'm done. Can you see it? Can, is, can you see it? I am asking you, can you see it? No. Um, okay. Oh, maybe I gotta turn the camera on. Wait. Mine is grayed out too, Lonnie. Lonnie, wait, let me see if I can I got it. How about now? Yep, got it. Okay. You just tell me when to scroll or whatever. I'm gonna Great. All right, that's awesome. Um, well, why don't you go to the table of contents page and you can see basically what's included in the study. He includes a bit of background, all the meetings that we attended, the input that the architect received from us, and then talks a bit about the existing building and site conditions. And then the three options, A, B, and C, he goes into more detail about, you know, um, how it will look, you know, aesthetically from the outside, as well as some uh, plans, some drawings. And then, um, you know, so the pretty pages, if you want to go and look at what he envisioned for, like, say, for option A, you can go to page 17. Oh. And option A is a full edition. There it is. That's from the side. So either a page before or a page after will give you another view. Okay, the page after. And that's behind. And like I said, I'm just going to give you an overview. You know, the this has lots of um, interior, you know, floor plans and stuff like that that you can check out. But just to give you a general idea, so that's option A, the full edition, and then option B was if we just had kind of a he calls it a port edition, so it would be a roof, basically a bathroom, outdoor space to do programming and it would be the same footprint as an addition and that the the pretty picture for that's on page 24. so he provides access you know from the parking lot up you know which which is kind of nice as well and there's some covered space um in addition to the terrace roof, there's there's some covered space like where the bathroom is. And then for the just a terrace, you know, taking down the building, you know, doing all that has to be done and just providing more like a platform for programming that's on page 29. And that also includes a bathroom. The pictures are a little rough. We you know, it's it's hard to really tell. That one is actually kind of odd looking, but. So. The gist of it is we've got some issues, you know, as everybody knows with the site. You know, is regarding the well. Um, that was kind of a big budget buster. I mean, we'll, we'll get to the money. I suppose we might as well just get there. Um, so the estimates that we got. Which, which are included in here for the option A, for the addition, which includes a design contingency. It includes general conditions, overhead and profit, and it includes a 4% escalation for every year. The total is 3,113,931. That ugly information starts on page 36. There you go. So for option B with just the porch, it's nine. I don't know if you scroll down a little bit. Well, actually, I can't see because of my controls. One point, yeah, two, three, one, five, twenty-seven, and then with just the 
Terrace 961. Now, now it, this doesn't even include soft costs like any hazardous material remediation, architect and engineering fees, um, OPM fees, nothing like that. So, you know, David pointed out the fact that we do have to deal with the well. Um, and the fact that if we, let's say we do an addition, that we're kicks off new requirements for fire protection. And that those requirements apply to the existing building as well. So, that's why a lot of this is a lot more expensive. But, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to do this was just to see what, what will it cost to take down the rectory, fill it in, move the water tank, you know, deal with all that stuff. So if you do look at, if you go to option C estimate, those estimates start on page 36, if you back up just a little bit. And yeah, if you actually go to the summary, there you go, and blow it up, you'll see like the huge expenses are demolition and site work for 237 and the foundations at almost 240. That's a huge chunk of the work. Um, and not to get into the details now, but they're provided, you know, in here. It's easy to pick apart, you know, what if we don't add a bathroom if we just just do the bare minimum it's easy to kind of back into what they estimate anyway um will we'll cost just to deal with with all of that so uh sorry lonnie here I'll, i'm and I, i'd be more than happy to talk to him but demolition of the existing rectory is two hundred and forty thousand dollars <throat> and the associated site work yeah not even including the foundations obviously lonnie just take a look at the just take a look at the the bones of it i mean these high level estimates are usually pretty high but when you see what's entailed in that you'll you'll get a better idea i'm not yeah, saying this is right. I'll, you know, I'll, reasonable I'll this is just what I'll, we have yeah, I'll definitely take. I'll, I'll I'll review it a little deeper, but I mean, I know. I, mean, I know we're not building a residential house, but we're demoing a re ultimately a residential house, and what needs to be done to put a patio in? I, I feel like those numbers are just extreme. I mean, unless I'm just missing something in in the rendering, but the if the 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 terrace piece was more just knock it down and it's almost like an outdoor patio correct Remember right well it's more than that they, and you'll see in the details it's like you know the architect okay. can't help himself he can't just say okay we're going to tear it down <laughs> fill it in and throw some grass on it he's got to go oh you've got to have a nice walkway you've got to do this you know and I, I, and we just I, let him I, I do that so that's why in the in the detail you can back out stuff that just is you're just not going to do you know um no no i get it but there's a retaining wall that that will need to be put in, which is like a hundred grand, you know, stuff like that, and just dealing with the basement itself, you know, cutting through and moving that water tank in. I think that's why the foundation stuff is expensive. But I know it seems okay. crazy. All right, understood. Yeah. Oh, yeah let, let, let me look. And at then the utilities that, that go along with that, where you hook and everything up. What's that? No, I, oh. I understand. I, I'll look at it much closer just so I understand it. I'm just looking okay. at, you know, as, a, as opposed to building a whole home, you know what I mean? And I've read that I know commercial is a bit different and we have to look at it from that angle. And, and I'm, pro I'm obviously missing something. So let me have a peek. Okay. So it was um, you know, kind of a kick in the gut to, to see the numbers. I'm not going to lie. Not that we were, you know, we have no plans in place, obviously, but it's kind of exciting, you know, to, to work through this and and see all the possibilities and and see what could be and all the uses that the town, you know, might have for it, you know, for the for the community. And and then when you <laughs> saw the estimate, wow. So. All right. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, option C that included the bathroom. When you know, if you don't put in a bathroom out there, you don't have the associated MEP work. You know, so it really, you'll see. You can you can cut it back quite a bit. Mm. I just want to see if there's anything else I want to point out. I think that's it. <clears throat> so, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, Mark. Just um. You know, I look at this and I go, holy cow, a million dollars to knock down a rectory. I'm kind of right there with Lonnie. Um, I know that there's a associated work that has to go along with it. The, you know, the biggest challenge that we have right now is, is that our well is sitting in that breezeway that connects the old rectory and, and the library. And yeah. that at some point is going to have to be fixed without a doubt. Um, I don't know what the timeline is or <clears throat> if there's urgency to get that fixed. I have no idea. I just know it's been a lingering problem for a while. I think the taxpayers getting hit with another $900,000 is going to take the breath out of a lot of people, to be honest with you, especially on the coattails of a police station and a fire truck and other things that we need to do in the list of priorities. But so, Amy, I guess the only question that I would have is, is that um, we really need to identify the priority of doing something with that well and or can we just can we just kind of chug along for the next few years foreseeable future to try to get through everything that we've just went through and then take a look at it again. Uh, I don't yeah, I mean, there's the, the it's the tank that needs to be moved. Um, so doing that work really doesn't affect the well itself, you know, to, Demoing the building, filling it in, and moving the tank. Chris. But I think you're looking more. Oh, good. This is Dan. But I just want to make a point that you really, it's probably closer to 500 grand than 900. If you look at the demo and site work and the foundations. So just to put that in there. But go ahead, Dan. Um, I say just, I can answer some of Chris's questions. So the current. Everything as it is today is okay. It's, I guess they kind of grandfathered in. It's an approved public water supply. However, any change to the site would require DEP to get involved. Um, if we're lucky, it's just some minimal plumbing to relocate the pressure tank. But, you know, if you do a whole new addition, there could be more to it. But right now, it's okay. It's just if something gets done in the future. Right. And it's not like the buildings, you know, it's not presenting any danger to anybody, you know, like it's not rotting would, in that sense. I mean, it looks horrible, but. I would add that if it's just demolishing the building, DEP would love that. They would be more than happy to see that gone. So that's necessarily not an obstacle. And that garage in the back needs to come down too. And the back back. That they really don't like that there. Yeah, I mean, again, as of today, we're okay, but if there's any future changes to the site, that's when we start to get into things. I mean, they haven't said there's no way it could happen. They've just said that there will definitely have to be a new set of reviews and approvals. So, and I, you know, I, for, you know, just for kicks, I went to see what kind of grant money might be available from the MBLC for building projects. And given this particular number, the 3.1 or so million, we could potentially qualify for a couple of million dollars in grant money. But we're behind, I think, 42 other communities who are waiting because there was a pause in funding. And then reinstated and you know get in line mm. kind of thing and then you know if you so you're talking a few years anyway and then of course all that the escalation you know you're talking four percent every year right okay any further questions on this or any further Actually, observations amy that you wanted to um, add well, we went to the trouble to have this done, so we'd like to at least share it with the community. Mm -hmm. um, so we were planning to just put it on the website, just with the 
comment that there are no plans to go forward with this, but this is what we got. Makes sense. Okay. Yep. I think that's it, unless Andrew or Tara have anything to add. No, I mean, I, I guess I would say that, you know, at some point it would be nice to have those buildings down um, just in terms of the, the the look of the rectory itself. It is deteriorating, uh, particularly on the back of the rectory, um, but the front is not looking uh, particularly good anymore. Um, uh, but as you said, there's a lot of mitigating factors uh, involved. Um, otherwise, I know I think everything's been covered. OK, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, consider dispatch or appointment. Dave or Kim, do you want to talk about that? We're just trying to get Dave's computer working. Well, it's not working. So. Yep. Yeah. It's through Kim, though. It's just Dave in the background, not on Dave's computer. We can hear you through Kim's computer. User error. <laughs> I don't think it counts since we've used each other's computers. So it's always it. user error. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why I tried a different browser, everything not working. Um, so since we had dispatch um, announced that we were going to Meta Comments, since we made that announcement, we've lost two full time dispatchers one right away, and then the second one has left about three, four weeks ago. Um, so I'm down to full, two full time dispatchers right now. I obviously can't run on that, so we do have an individual. Um, who's going to be going to the full-time academy later on um, in the year. So he knows that this isn't going to be a permanent job. Um, he's already been trained. He's ready to roll um, and work midnights. So we're going to have him start on midnights this week um, in a full-time position. And I'm going to replace that one for now. I think I'm going to be able to run on three full-time dispatchers. I have a bunch of part-timers that will be appointing soon. And that's where I'm going to fill the gap. Okay. We need them. We have a motion there. No. Well, I mean, you're very good at me. You know, it, like I had to be dying before I'm basically doing something. Do you guys have a motion? No, but we can hear Kim like she's talking in the microphone. So uh, she's talking over to uh, Eric. Um, do we have a motion for the no, dispatch? Because it came in five minutes before the meeting. Okay. Do you want me say, to no, read mine? I have my, can you hear me my phone? I can give you the motion if you want me to give it to you and we yeah, can uh, so write it up after. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, this is. Here we go. Okay. Uh, dear Chairman Real, I respectfully request the select board consider appointment of Mr. Nicholas Walker to position of communication officer for the Men and Police Department. Uh, Mr. Walker would begin his employment at a pay rate of 25.0832 an hour. Um, thank you for your consideration of this appointment. So do you want to just do a motion uh, to appoint Mr. Walker uh, to begin employment at the pay rate of 25.0832? So moved. Is there a second. second. All in favor? Eric okay. Aye. Tineo Aye. Real Aye. All set. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that would be all. So I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Eric okay. Aye. Tineo Aye. Real Aye. That's it. One hour. Bye -bye. Nice job. See you guys.